All right. So let's put this into practice. Uh, imagine a plain wall is made of three different materials here. Uh, we can't you just use a rate equation here because our K is going to be different in each of these situations. And we want to know what our heat rate is through those walls. Okay. By observation, we can recognize that the change in temperature from T1 to T4, that is the T surface 4 and T surface 1, is going to be the sum of the delta T's in each of the three materials. Okay, that's we're just adding up our temperature changes to find the total temperature change. Then we can use our flow version of Fourier's law of the conduction equation to find an expression for each of these delta T's. Okay, so all this is here is a rewriting of our conduction rate equation in which we isolate our delta T. And then we can recognize that, oh, these guys here, that is our resistance R in the flow format. Okay, so L makes, you know, is going to increase our resistance, contact area is going to decrease it, a high conductivity coefficient is also going to decrease that resistance. So we've rewritten this guy as in terms of Q, the amount of flow, and R. Okay, now we're going to take this form and put it into this equation. And we get this here, where our total temperature difference is going to be our Q, so we're kind of pulling Q. We know Q has to be the same through all of these, right? Because if we're at steady state, we're going to reach whatever goes into any surface here has to come out that other surface. Our flow has to be steady all the way through. So we pull Q out um, and we end up with this equation here where we've defined R uh, when we re-parameterized that conduction rate equation. And now we can see very clearly as we rewrite this guy here, this becomes delta T surface, um, we can see that parallel to the series equation uh, in circuits. Okay, so this is our um, resistance, our, our, uh, if we put resistors in a series, this is the equation we get with Ohm's law, and this is what we get uh, with our heat transfer equations. This is a nice way to think about what's happening here, right? We can sort of look at these and imagine, okay, the thing that's going to cause this heat flow to be slower is if one of these terms is really big, right? So the thing that's going to matter most is, because we're summing these up, uh, is whichever one of these resistance values is largest. And so just knowing that is helpful in terms of kind of understanding the physics of this situation. Um, if I, you know, if we imagine this is an insulative wall, if I have one layer that's really good at insulating, it may not matter very much what my other layers are uh, because I'm just going to be adding those and it's going to be dominated by that, um, that, that um, really big resistive layer. Now, uh, you have to remember what assumptions go into this resistance network before you use this sort of uh, network thinking. You have to remember we don't have any heat generation here, right? There's no, in a circuit, there's no parallel to having a, uh, some kind of heat generation. Um, this is only about 1D heat conductions. We're, we're, the metaphor is this is like a wire, right? And so all of that flow is headed in one direction. Uh, and that it has to be at steady state. Okay, so we're not talking here about what's going to happen if we change T1 or T4. We're thinking about over a long period of time um, what, what's going to be the heat flow through these surfaces. Um, and if, none of the, if one of those assumptions is not true, we can't use this network type thinking. So, Let's expand the way that this is useful, right? So here's our basic equation 
where Q is going to be equal to the driving force divided by our resistance. Um, we can apply that. We applied it to a series type network before. We can also apply it to a parallel uh, type situation, right? If we want to say, um, you know, imagine what the heat flow through a wall is that maybe has studs uh, with insulation between the studs. Um, that's like a parallel network, right? That heat flow can go in different ways through that wall, just like in a circuit. And we also have a whole set of ways to think about this in terms of convection uh, and of flow through a cylinder. And so we're, just to kind of look here, we've got a, the basic heat rate definition. Um, here's a heat rate as we're going through a plane wall. This equation comes from um, a basic mathematical uh, analysis of a cylindrical wall where we have um, a radius one surface and a radius two surface. So you might think of this as a, like a wire with insulation where the radius one would be the outside of the wire, radius two would be the outside of the insulation. Uh, and we would want to know how much heat is flowing from, say, that wire, which might be generating um, some uh, electrical heat, right, um, some resistive heat. Uh, how does that move through our insulation? And then we have a convective surface um, that we talked a little bit about before, um, where our heat rate is defined by the convective rate equation. Each of those gives us, you know, you can see each of them has a delta T in it. The part that's not delta T, the inverse of that is our resistance. Okay, and so we just, each one of these, we're just flipping this part of the equation to give us the resistance to that flow. One last little trick with this is like with an electrical circuit, uh, we can have a bad connection uh, between materials, um, say in conduction. Okay, and so uh, a rough interface, like if this is our interface here, uh, is actually going to impede conductance because air is really resistant um, to, um, to conductive um, heat exchange. And, uh, and so this essentially is like adding another resistor. Okay, and so we can decide here that there's an R contact. Uh, and we can add that in our series, right? So if we have, you know, material A and B, the flow through here might be, you know, have to do with RA and RB, but also with R contact. And we'd sum all three of those uh, to get our, uh, our series resistance, our total resistance. Now that increases the complexity of the problem because oftentimes we'd have to define R contact. You see that our contact here is defined by Q. Usually we want to find Q. Uh, and so we'll have to have some way to define our contact, usually by experience, right? If we have some idea of um, how two materials fit together, what kind of glue we're using, what kind of pressure is on them, uh, we would be able to define by experience what that R contact is. All right, and that's resistance networks for heat transfer.